Hello there and welcome to the next instructional video for the utility splines from Rocket Lasso. In this video we're going to be talking about the Bezier spline. Now we already checked out this scene file a little bit earlier where I've got this text and it is the font GG which has all these little bumps and imperfections on the sides. So it's a good candidate for smoothing it out. So before we get to the Bezier, why don't we smooth this spline out a bit. So feeding this into a utility smooth. You can instantly see everything's gotten nice and smooth. Even the defaults here, I think, look pretty good. We could maybe increase it a little bit. Let's counter scale. So we're maintaining that original shape. This is all explained in the smooth video. So that's looking pretty good. But if we were to make this editable, let's say we want to make some changes, like that we get this extra bump here. Maybe we want that to be smoother. And maybe over there, like that's pushing out a little bit too far. Maybe that got too thin right there. Well, we'd want to change that. So maybe we make it editable and go to point mode, but now you're going to see, look at all these points that we have. It'd be difficult to, in a very smooth way, move those points over. So, let's undo, because this can be done as an entire hierarchy. Let's feed this smooth into the utility Bezier. As soon as I put that in, it shouldn't look too different. It should look pretty good right out of the box. But let's double-click on the icon, which, of course, activates the tick marks. Double click on it and you'll now see that instead of seeing a whole bunch of little ticks on exactly where every point is, we are now seeing a much smaller number and they have tangent lines on there. So this is attempting to take a complex spline that has curves and reduce the points away until we're left with just the handles that are actually doing a lot. So um, in this particular circumstance, we, the only setting we're going to worry about is our tolerance. And that is how far away between, say, one tangent and another, how far away could a point in between move away from the original reference spline before it's gone too far? And that's the tolerance. So if, say, a midpoint right here was, was further than one centimeter away, then a new subdivision would be created to make it more accurate. So the larger we make the tolerance, the more we are reducing everything. We'll be creating fewer and fewer tangents. Now, I don't think we can actually push this that far before it's going to start breaking down. You'll see I can, I can increase this a whole bunch to the point where it's getting super simplified and abstracted, where here this is only made of two tangents. Here's only two. We've pushed it very far. Moving this back to something like one, you could even go smaller, let's say 0.2. And now you'll see that we'll get a whole bunch more tangents. It's still a big reduction in the number of points and controls, but I think leaving this around one is actually looking pretty good for what I would like to do here. So with these reduced points, let's take a look at what it would have been. Back to the smooth, make that editable, and we can see the point count. And now let's go to the Bezier and make that editable. And now you can see I've only got a very small number of points that I have to control now. So over here, it got really thin. I can just grab the single point and scoot it over. Over here, let's see, that's bulging out a little bit. Let's scoot that back in nice and clean. Maybe pull this point, make it a little bit out, and T for scale, make it a little bit sharper. Very easy to make changes to the way this is laid out, manipulating these splines in a very simple way. And if you think about what the way that this spline originally looked and what we've changed it to, like that is a huge difference. Let's move on to another file. Look at this mirror file. You'll be seeing more of this in the quick start video. So this is a kind of a complex vector graphic that I pulled over from an image that I converted in Photoshop. But I would like to reduce these points even more and get it more controllable. So feeding this mirror directly into a Bezier spline. Out of the gate, you're going to see that it is smoothed it out a whole bunch. If I double click, we can see exactly where the handles are falling. Now, in this case, it's a pretty small model overall. If I make a cube, you'll see that, yeah, this is very small overall. So we can set our tolerance to be smaller. We don't want the things to move too far away from the line. So we can say like 0.5, which is looking okay. But if I turn this off, you see we get these kind of mushroom shapes going on. I'd like to maintain those. So let's push even further. I'll say 0.2 maybe. Yeah, 0.2. We have way fewer handles, but at least the mushroom shapes have been maintained. Let's take a look at a couple of our other settings. Now, we've got Detect Corner, which is actually a very powerful and important setting. Most of the time, I expect that people will just click around until they get whichever one they think looks best. Um, not something that you have to super worry about. But on a technical level, what this is doing is it is checking, say, this tangent right here. And it's like, okay, it's putting a tangent out here, a tangent out there. It is built out of something that is of a particular direction. And if 
from this point to that point in between, it was a very sharp edge. Essentially, it was a straight edge. That single edge is saying, well, that means this was a really straight edge it was connected to. So break the tangent. And that's actually what's happening over here. You can see that this line or that line must have been really sharp, a very straight line. So this is like, okay, that was such a straight line. Break that tangent. Two edges, turn that on. You'll now see that all of those have gotten smoothed out because two edges is saying, well, if I'm going to break a corner, then both of the edges, like that edge and that edge, would have, would have had to have been very sharp to break it. Depending on your setup, that will be visually obvious or not. It actually goes a long way when you're dealing with text. Actually, that might be a better example. So we'll check that out in a moment. And then none, that means it's not trying to break any corners. Everything should be getting smoothed out kind of across the board, except for our break tangent. Break tangent is also detecting kind of the angle that made up this curve. And the sharper that we make this, the more it's going to be trying to break various tangents. So let's say that we've got this mushroom shape, but we know that if we turn that off, we'd see the original, that that is very sharp edge, very sharp. If I want those sharp edges to come back, I can reactivate it and begin increasing our break tangent angle. And as I do, you see that that one broke. Let's push it a little bit further. And that one broke and that tangent broke. Let's push it further. And then, yeah, we can now see that that one broke. So now the overall mushroom shape, nice and smooth along the top, but we got that sharp angle back again on the bottom. So we've tried to reduce this as far as we could without losing too much of the detail. So if we were to make it editable, we could manipulate this shape very easily. You know, stretch things out. This obviously is crying out to be mirrored somehow, but you know, the entire thing became a lot more controllable. To show the break tangents a little bit better, let me open up another scene file and drag this over. And you can see I've got a font that's largely very sharp, but we've got a couple of letters that are very curved. And this has been imported to the level where it's very subdivided. So again, very difficult to control if we wanted to. So let's feed this directly into a utility Bezier and double click. And we can now see where the tangents are being created. And you can see that we are getting something that's nice and smooth and curved, but these sharp angles are continuing to be super sharp because those tangents got broken. And those tangents got broken mostly from this detect corner. If we say none, then you're gonna see a lot of these are turning into curves. Like this became relatively smooth because it's like, well, I'm not trying to find a specific corner to break via straight lines making it up. So having done that, we could say that it will break a tangent automatically. In fact, let's get rid of this break tangent entirely. So now everything is a big giant curve. If we say, hey, if one of your edges is a straight line, break the tangent. As soon as I turn that on, like this, you can see that that straight edge has broken. Even over here, this is a curved line, but that is a straight line. So a single edge being this one said, yes, break that tangent. Now two edges you'll see over here, this suddenly isn't curved because only, let's turn it off temporarily, only one of its sides, only one of its edges was straight. The other one was curved. So it's like, well, you required two edges to detect a corner. So that one didn't count. Now, again, like I said, for most people, I imagine just clicking around and being like, which one of these looks best? And in this case, clearly single edge looks best. So that, that works there. Even with that off though, potentially you could break the tangent by increasing this amount. They do detect different things, so there are reasons to use both, but I could have, you know, I can keep on increasing this more and more and more until it finally seems to have found all the proper tangents automatically there. Putting that back to default though, putting single angle, we could start increasing our tolerance until we see something go too far. So right around there, you'd see that we now have very few controls along the edge, just seems to be working really well overall. And a final quick file, if we move into this camera path that we've looked at before, we can also apply it here. Typically, I would smooth something out first, but you don't have to. I can feed even this very rough shape into the extension utility Bezier. And you're going to see as I double click and we can actually see the tangents that at a tolerance of one, it had to create a bunch of tangents. Now, there, it is fewer than the original spline. If we click on the original, you'll see there's quite a few points. So it did reduce some. But if we want to start smoothing this out, we have to say that it has a bigger tolerance. So as I increase this up to two, you can see way fewer points making it up. I think keep going further and further and further, 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 further. And as I do this, we are, you know, the line might drift a little bit further away than it used to be, but look at how many fewer controls that we have. 
Now, I think everything here we want to be smooth, so I'll say don't detect any corners and don't break any tangents. And we keep on decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And as I do, you know, like I said, we're losing some fidelity. So that's typically where, let's even delete that, typically where I'd feed this into a smooth first. So let's say first extension, smooth, do a couple of smoothing passes on it, counter scale it back up again. The smoother we are, the better in this instance. So yeah, nice and smooth all the way around. Feed that into our Bezier. And now you see that we've converted that. Let's double click. And now you see that we have very few tangents overall. And as I increase this, the fidelity of that spline is not going away anywhere near as quickly. It's it's remaining pretty close to the line. So if I were to stop there, but you know, let's push it further. We're a little bit further away from the line, but let's pull the original out. And you can see that those two splines are definitely following a very similar path. So anyway, Bezier can be made editable and we can now go over and select any one of these points and make changes to the overall spline very easily. So the ability to convert a co complicated spline back into something very simple and controllable, I just thought was a very powerful thing to add in. Um, it's actually, you know, overall the tool is pretty straightforward. The one thing maybe to note, let me hit undo a few times. Uh, one thing to note, actually, it's probably best shown here, is when you make a Bezier spline editable, you got to remember that we have these handles, and those handles are being subdivided based on its intermediate points. So currently, the intermediate points are set to 5, and you'll see here, if I zoom in, that the actual extrude isn't quite reaching the spline. That's because that is such a subtle angle, and this has nothing to do with our plugin, it's just that that's such a subtle angle, that it's smaller than five degrees, so it's not subdividing anymore. So if I wanted that to match a little bit better, it needs more polygons, which means it needs a sharper angle. So if I set that to two, suddenly it's going to jump and match that way better. Hitting undo until I get the parametric version of this back. You can actually do that within the plugin without having to make it editable. So you saw that the, if I turn this off, it's not, it, in the same way, it's not quite matching the spline, but you can make it match by going into the spline tab and you'll see that there is a checkbox here to enable the intermediate points. So if you set your spline type to Bezier, you can change here. You get access to those same parameters. So I can say, yes, make it sharper up to two degrees. And now you can see that that popped back out again while this is still parametric. We didn't have to make it editable, but we can get the extra subdivisions while having maximum control over the original spline. So that is going to conclude our Bezier spline utility. In the next video, we will be talking about the spline tab and everything that it does. Bye-bye.